Kenny would still be QB1 here. Do you know who would be saying about Kenny if that was the case, man? Come on, bro. Dog. Come on, man. You know what people would be saying about Justin Fields? Come on, man. They'd be saying he's he's Michael Vick, but with a with, with, with better, a better, better throw in the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So, or, honestly, he's, or he's Lamar Jackson, better throw yeah. in the ball. So that's why for me it's like I don't want to play the speculation game because if we're going to speculate, let's do it accurately. Let's do it appropriately. We can't speculate positively only for this player and then only give negative speculation for the other guy because we don't like him as much or we're not as a fan of this guy as the other guy. It's like, no, if we just look at full bodies of work and what they've done historically at this level, one has already proven that he can. One has already proven that he has won one of those rings and has been back to another game. One has already proved that even in his worst down year, it would have been any of those two guys, or even if he threw Trubisky, you throw Duck Hodges, anybody else in between, those are career years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For for everybody post-Ben that we've seen, yeah, that would be a career year. You're lining yourself up for a nice contract extension type year. Yeah. I'm not talking Mahomes or Prescott or Burrow no, but money, but a nice, nice con. A yeah. Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith money. Right. $100 million contract. But there's also a reason why Russ is still a $40 million quarterback today. And Justin Fields is trying to prove that he's worth the $40 million contract. I think that those are the things that, because we haven't seen Russ, it's a lot easier to kind of forget about what he's capable of or what he's already proven in this league. And the recency element, the newness of Justin Fields, we're not going to lie, man. It does feel good. And it's a breath of fresh air, especially when you think about what we had a year ago or the past two seasons at the position. But at the same time, we can't just, you know, fast forward past what Russ is truly capable of. But that's my long answer towards it. But honestly, man, I don't want to do too much more speculating because I do. I don't want to take away from what Justin Fields is doing in stadiums right now, because when we do the speculation, we do have to bring up the negative from Chicago. And right now he's only been giving us positive. So it's like, man, we don't have to keep dwelling on that. It's like, man, we can appreciate what he's doing right now. We could be optimistic about what he's doing right now, but also at the same time. Understand that, yes, Russ is further along in his development as a quarterback at the professional level. And outside of an injury, he would be the guy that's out there. And Coach has already communicated that on countless occasions. So let's enjoy this process. And hopefully for Justin Fields, he proves that he can be better than Russ. But because if he, if he is, if he if he comes in and he's and he is, man, we could see that offense start to exhibit the growth that we absolutely are really longing for. Absolutely, but let's let him have that time. Like I said, to prove it, to develop it, or even fail for some of the people that are skeptical about him. But one way or the other, Fair. let's allow it to happen. Fair. We're gonna take our final break real quick though, because I do want to make sure we got enough time to get the rest of your tweets on the back end in this last segment. We got some Joe Alt and TJ Watt tweets. So we're gonna take our final break, baby. But get him in when you can, because when we get back, the time will be yours. It's our most. That's what's fuel, and this is the Steelers Blitz. Steelers football happens here. The Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. It's Greg Wolfley for my friends at Clearview Federal Credit Union. The Clearview team is here to help you score your financial goals and support our community. Clearview is always upping their game for those in need. Through Touchdowns for Hope, these pros will donate $500 to the Light of Life Rescue Mission for every black and gold touchdown scored this season. Now that's what makes a real winning team. Visit clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown to learn more and open an account today. That's clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown. Join former gridiron great Mike Logan for a black and gold wine and watch party on Sunday, September 29th at Black Dog Wine Company. This intimate event provides the chance to watch the game with a former player, ask questions, and gain knowledge on and off the field. Tickets to the event are free and include an appetizer spread, two glasses of wine, and a bottle to take home. Space is extremely limited. Register today at showclicks.com. Keyword, wine and watch. The wine and watch party at Black Dog Wine Company is brought to you by United States Steel, along with S&T Bank. This is the Steelers Blitz with Wesley Euler and Arthur Motes on your 24-7 home of the black and gold, SNR. Oh, yes. I love when we talk about being on the Steelers audio network like that. 
And of course, it's the Steelers Blitz. But you know, we're not going to waste too much time because we're going to the back half of the show, man. Real quick for you. You know, we talk about the NFL inevitably going to 18 regular season games. This is true. Inevitably, I think our show is going to be streamed at some point, too. For, all the for shows, better or worse. all the shows on SNL. For better or worse, I mean they're doing it with Dale and yeah. Matt right now, right? And you know what that means? Kind of test drive. Then, Ooh, then but they they have a face for TV. Matt and Dale are much yeah. prettier than we are. They I think every, TV, everybody bro. would agree on yeah. that one. Uh, so where I was going with this is eventually we're gonna have to call it the Steelers Audio Video Network. Ooh, Ooh. I'm sorry. There's there. my bad corny dad joke for the day. There. I'm I sorry, like I couldn't it. resist. I like it, but it, you know what? It's all good, man. It's all good. Just get big red in here. Time's yours. We're gonna bounce back. All right, back. let's roll through these things here as we go along. I did want to get the last of the hot dog tweets out of the way just real quick because we know this is very pertinent. Russell tweets, <laughs> Texas Tommy hot dog wrapped in bacon with cheese and barbecue sauce. Mm. <laughs> Matt See, tweets. He was on the barbecue sauce, though. Uh, there we go. It's, it's, listen, I'm, I'm, I like it. Matt tweets, uh, as it relates to the hot dogs, just throw some coleslaw on that thing. I agree with the caveat of Mozi. It's got to be... This is like a Permanis, a Permanis hot dog? But see, it's got to be the sweet coleslaw, not the vinegar-based coleslaw. Coleslaw does not belong on hot dogs. You wrong. It don't belong on hot with dogs. Chili. God, with chili. With chili and man. Uh, Wallace, what is this abomination? Wallace tweets, <laughs> beef dog, pickled onions, bacon, chimichurri sauce, and a fried egg. Ooh, Ooh that sounds like breakfast, okay. dog. Okay. No pun intended. I see what you did there. Eric tweets and says, believe it or not, peanut butter, mayonnaise, bacon, sautéed onions. Mm, the sautéed onions are fire. That's an elite move. I, peanut butter and mayonnaise, not together separately, might be my two favorite condiments. I don't know if peanut butter counts as a condiment. I love peanut butter. I love mayonnaise. I cannot imagine them together. That's definitely a unique combination. I think that's the last of the hot dog tweets. <laughs> Matt tweets us and says, <laughs> Matt tweets us and says, what can we expect from Joe Alt versus TJ Watt this weekend? Alt looks like one of the next great offensive tackles in the league. I got a feeling that'll come up on Friday during five. Uh-huh, start of uh-huh. Friday. Don't rush but it. You can't quick, rush it. What, what can we expect? I think is good on good. Um, uh, it's a strong possibility to be good on good. But, Violence, but but at the same time, a can, baptism. Can, hopefully, can, can, can I tell you, it, it, it still is a rookie. Mm-hmm. And 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 his homie is just a second year player too. Mm-hmm. So, just 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 know, it's levels to this thing. <sighs> I like uh, it, though, but it's levels to this day. Dealer Nation 920, our buddy Tyler up in Wisconsin. Hi, Joe linebackers. Hi, Joe corners. <sighs> George, Adam. George Pickens out here catching everything. This is facts. Roughing up Pat Sertain like a rag doll. The Steelers were turned up to 11. I would agree. Who in the team currently expresses the most energy? Also, shout out to Wes's boy, Zach Frazier. He's tossing linebackers like Craig Wolfley tosses pizzas at Caliente. Mm, 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 mm. George Pickens might be expressing the most energy. I mean, I like it. I definitely like what I'm seeing. Can I can I get uh, Peyton Wilson for, for 200, Peyton please? Wilson. You know who is a total energy bringer? He is just on 11 all the time. I'm listening. On the practice field, on the sideline. Is it the... Minka Fitzpatrick? Nick Herbig. Oh, yeah, shout out to Herbig, too. Nick Herbig yeah, is just, Herbig. he's an energy bringer, yeah, man. He's always Herbig. in a good mood. He's I, I, always vibed that's, that's, up. That's he's young all, fun right there, man. He's always he's young he, fun. Every day is the best day ever yeah. to Nick Herbig. Like, and those you, are the people you like to be around. That's 100% accurate. Anytime I've talked to him, <laughs> interact like with him, the see him at ever. practice, it's just like he's having an absolute blast. Like, he's just happy to be here. I love that about him, man, Me because... Too. Always say, man, at this level, it's hard to keep your joy. It's hard to keep that like kid, like energy, kid, like spirit. You're so to beat see, up, yeah. you're criticized, you're right. dealing with the media and, look, and the you, fans. You become and hardened. You become an old crumbling. Everybody man. wants your picture and your autograph <laughs> look, and your time. I always say, look at how Najee was smiling when he first got here. Then he kind of went through that phase of like having to like look at Juju. Yeah, Juju was like, yo, it was like, oh, ride with bike. Now he's like, hey man, y'all gotta chill out, man. All right, we all go through it. Juju went from riding his bike to Corvette. <laughs> Corvette. Everybody goes through you like, hey, man. Hey, hey, space it out. Give me some time. All right, so I love it, though, man. I love it. Jeff wants to know your thoughts on uh, getting fields out on the edge with more designed rollouts. Um, I think we're seeing more of that. I think last week was the first introduction to it because it was actually the first full week of preparation with Justin Fields as QB1, and I think this week will be similar. I think it's also just continuing to expand when they feel it's appropriate. The more opportunities you allow for Justin Fields to run on the edge, the more opportunities you have to worry about potential negativity, whether that is in ball handling or decision making if we're talking run pass options. These are some of the things that they're just trying to minimize 
the opportunities for bad plays minimize the opportunities for negativity without living in their fears because i think those are two different things i felt like with uh some of the other quarterbacks in the past we've done some of the living in our fears and completely minimizing our ability to be explosive i don't feel like that with justin i just feel like we're still just taking our time with learning him and how much they want to put on his plate right now and i think it's appropriate but his plays reflected it we're two and no he's been clean no turnovers and has had this offense in multiple scoring drives. Now, granted, there have been more field goals than touchdowns, but it's been multiple drives mm-hmm. where we've been in scoring position. Mm-hmm. Michael Jones tweets us. Shout out to Michael Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Welcome to the party, pal. Chestnut checkers, Mike Tomlin with the hot dog comment. He is the master at the microphone. <laughs> Uh, I think the game plan so far this year has been by design. They're doing what needs to be done to win, but I do think they'll start to open things up a little bit this weekend. I like it. The Chargers can score some points. Mm-hmm. We'll see. All right. I mean, they've scored points. We don't know if they can score points. They play just shit. And there's also the Carolina Panthers. Everybody's like, oh, man, they can score. Have you played the Steelers defense yet? Eh. Oh, okay. Atlanta can score too until they play the Steelers defense. Just remember that. Big Ron tweets and says, hot dog. Not a top five all-time Tomlinism, but might put it in the top ten. Give it time to grow on us. Oh, okay. He's got more meat on that grove bone then. Wants to know Arthur Motes' thoughts on PQ Patrick Queen so far. Man, getting up to speed. When you talk about going from preseason to regular season, there is a huge uptick in speed. You also talk about the position that he plays. He's the big dog at LB, meaning he doesn't come off the field for run or pass, for base, dime, nickel, and everything in between. He also had a little bit of a growing this past week. But at the same time, I look at the production, I look at the tackles for loss, I look at the, especially the improvement on tackling this week versus the Broncos, then that first game versus Atlanta, and I say, man, he's going to be fine. Um, I know because of the contract, we want interceptions and sacks right out the gate every single play. Sometimes that is how it works out. In this case, it's been more of the group playing at a high level. But when you look at him, you look at this defense, you look at Landon Roberts and Peyton Wilson also, Where's the lack of production at? And that's kind of how I look at this thing because I don't look at our defense and I'm saying our linebackers are an issue. I don't look at our defense and say we don't have a linebacker that can run with tight ends or can play sideline to sideline. No, I look at it, I say, man, we got playmakers everywhere mm-hmm. on this field. So I concur. Yeah, I feel I feel good about what I'm saying with Patrick Queen and it's only going to get better. And that's the one thing we have to remember. What you see in September, it's not what you're going to be seeing in November and December. Mm-hmm. At least it shouldn't be. No, it better not be. <laughs> That's what to say. Should it be? It Those guys be. typically don't last long in this league, man. They do not. And speaking of lasting long, we don't want to last too long on this show. So, with that being the case, we're going to start to wrap it up. So, Ooh. shout out to our producer, the one that had us extra crispy on the microphones. I'm talking Wesley Yoler. Hot dog. There it is. Chili or no chili? Always chili. Boom. Power Grip, Mega Watchman, we always appreciate your participation, man. Without y'all, there is no us, so shout out yeah, I, to y'all. Just, shout out to real y'all. Real quick, isn't it funny? Like, we get tweets every day, football tweets, questions. But our tweets, like, tenfold anytime we start talking anytime, about food. Anytime we talk food, y'all put or y'all, y'all in the building, man. It's, it's always hilarious. It's the non-football stuff that y'all, like, gravitate to way more than the football it's stuff, which it's is hilarious. crazy. And this is a football show, all right? But... Either way, shout out to my partner in crime, Mr. West Virginia, Mr. Wesley Valen. Go ears. Always, always. And with that being the case, man, you already know where to find us on your 24-7 home of the black and the gold. It's the Stellar's Audio Network. Hey, now. We bleed black and gold. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. You know when you said, come over for the fight? We thought you meant your house. You guys want another round of Bud Lights? Service is better here. And so is the beer. Bud Light is back as the official beer sponsor of UFC. Enjoy responsibly. 2024 Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Why does Pennsylvania need the U.S. Steel-Nippon merger? It protects thousands of union jobs. Nippon is committed to a nearly $3 billion upgrade of U.S. Steel's union-represented mills including $1 billion to upgrade 86-year-old equipment in the Mon Valley. Nippon's cutting-edge technology to decarbonize the blast furnaces will make the Mon Valley's air cleaner, and it will help U.S. Steel reach its goal of being net zero emissions by 2050. 
all of this will increase U.S. Steel's competitiveness worldwide. And the merger also protects 1,000 headquarters jobs and keeps U.S. Steel in Pittsburgh, where it has been for nearly 125 years. Protecting jobs, modernizing steelmaking, and increasing competitiveness. Pennsylvania needs the U.S. Steel Nippon merger so we can keep steel in the steel city. Paid for by U.S. Steel. It's Craig Wolfley for my friends at Clearview Federal Credit Union. The Clearview team is here to help you score your financial goals and support our community. Clearview is always upping their game for those in need. Through Touchdowns for Hope, these pros will donate $500 to the Light of Life Rescue Mission for every black and gold touchdown scored this season. Now that's what makes a real winning team. Visit clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown to learn more and open an account today. That's clearviewfcu.org slash touchdown. Buy one window, get a free unicorn. Just kidding. Are you tired of dishonest offers? I'm Brian Murphy, owner of Easy Home Exteriors, and we take your home seriously. If you need windows, roofing, siding, or doors, we'll give you fair, honest pricing the first time, every time. No pressure, no gimmicks. We'll give you a free estimate. You don't even need to be home. Call 412-678-7008. That's 412-678-7008. If you're lucky, we'll throw in a unicorn. <laughs> Finding that missing shin guard. Remembering whether it's a home or away game, getting the right kid to the right playing field on the right day. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things, like not being that fan. Oh, come on, ref! That's simple human sense. Ask Bulova Insurance Services in Greensburg if auto owners make sense for you. We ended yesterday's show with the news from Mike Tomlin's Tuesday press conference that it's status quo as far as the quarterback is concerned. We are going to approach this week the same way as last week. Fields is going to expect to be our starter. And Russell Wilson, he said today, which is Wednesday, he was looking into the future, he would not be able to practice as far as his estimation is concerned. We'll confirm that in a couple of hours as we're recording this on Wednesday morning. And I just, you know, I called this last week when Tomlin said that in the press conference. Fields mm-hmm. is going to start. I'm not holding out any hope for Russ. I guess this week it would make more sense to hold out hope for Russ because he's oh, he's got another week of rehab, another week of recovery under his belt. That calf should be getting closer. But I'm still just thinking it's Fields. I'm not going to leave the light on, if you will, for Russell Wilson to get healthy no. on Thursday, come Friday, step in to the first team offense and some f- few practice reps that he would have as it'd be later in the week and then get ready to take on the Chargers in the home opener at Akershire Stadium. So we're rolling with Justin Fields for another week. This is the Steelers Standard on the Steelers Audio Network, Tom Opferman and Jacob Recht. Now you have to, I think, look at it in the micro and approach it like the Steelers do week to week. And talk about, can Justin Fields win this game against the L.A. Chargers on Sunday? We'll look at the macro in a little bit. We'll talk about, you know, long-term Justin Fields. Does he show you anything that makes you prom- that gives you promise that he can be the guy for this team? But right now, we're going to look at just the game in front of you. And I think for a third week in a row, the answer is yes. He can beat this team for you. This is not the step up in competition that I am worried about Justin Fields being able to handle. It may be a slight step up in competition between the two teams you faced, especially the team you just faced last week, but you still are not you know, broaching elite territory when it comes to the L.A. Chargers, and you get a West Coast team in your dojo at mm-hmm. 1 p.m., which is always a good sauce for a victory. Yeah, definitely. I... Uh... I think that if this was the first time Justin Fields was taking the field, you know, if Russ was playing those first two weeks and you had Fields have to come in because that calf injury was re-aggravated this week, I'd be singing a, a much different tune. But this is the third week in a row that you get to go out there with Justin Fields. And granted, the product that you saw out of him and the offense overall the last two weeks hasn't been ideal, right? We've we've mentioned that they're only averaging... 
15 and a half points per game in, in these first two weeks. But at the least, there's some familiar, familiarity. Uh, the Steelers have rushed for a combined 270-some yards in the first two weeks of the season, Tom. In 2023 and 2022 combined in the first two weeks, so that's four games, the Steelers rushed for 260 yards in the first two weeks. So a lot of that has to do with Justin Fields, and a lot of that has to do this year with Arthur Smith, he likes to run the ball. He likes to use Justin Fields. So it's not like you're trotting out there something entirely new. This is what new teams have to deal with, kind of getting the rust off the wheels and getting things into a groove, getting things into a cohesive, fluid movement within the unit. And we've seen that. Ha- we've seen the growing pains with Justin Fields. We've seen the growing pains with the offensive line. Um, We spent a lot of time yesterday talking about Broderick Jones and his inability to stay on the field because of three penalties and one drive. That is a fixable issue. Uh, I heard Wolf say on his show that it's an offensive line that that is something that you can be trained and it's not something that's going to linger for Broderick Jones. A lot of people have been coming under fire for Broderick Jones for his comments made in the post-game interviews uh, when he was pulled after the Denver game. And he said, you know what? I'm not perfect. If you if if I'm not going to start, then that that's the case. I mean, I don't want to be out there if I'm not going to be good enough to start. And a lot of people kind of misinterpreted that as he's quitting on the team. But I thought it was a pretty good, mature way to look at it. First of all, he's a young guy. Uh, was able to step up to the plate and handle those questions in the locker room. And second, he owned up to his mistakes. And he said, if I'm not good enough, then I shouldn't be the one out there. But we all know that Broderick Jones being the first-round caliber kind of guy, he should be the one out there. And it's not going to be perfect when he goes out there because we've seen in training camp the Steelers use him potentially or partially as a backup. So and and we saw him when he first entered the lineup last season, not really hit his groove until the months of December because he was getting used to going out there every week. And I think that once he's made a part of the starting lineup, hopefully that's sooner rather than later, you'll see him improve. Those penalties will disappear. The pass protection will improve. Well, I don't know if it's going to be sooner rather than later. Well, yeah, I mean, because the, Dan Moore Jr. is doing a pretty good job of holding his own spot. The official depth chart came out yesterday, updated with him being the backup mm-hmm. tackle for both sides, left and right. Yeah, but I'm happy to see Troy Fatano out there as a starter. Yeah, Troy played well. Dan Moore's been playing well, too, this year. It's going to be a much bigger test this week. Sure, and overall, yeah, like overall, um, this is a defensive matchup, right? You have Khalil Mack They're very similar and teams. Joey Bosa going up against... Cam Hayward and TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith. And, I'll say this though: yeah. the Chargers' defense is star. There's a lot of stars over there, but they don't have the depth. They don't have the additional the pieces. Speed. They don't. The Steelers' defense is a much better defense overall than the Chargers. The Steelers or the Chargers' defense reminds me of maybe a Steelers' defense from a couple years ago, maybe even last year, where you had a bunch of stars out there and they had to really carry the load. But, you know, you were kind of weak on the defensive line because of the Cam Hayward injury, and Benton was just getting up to speed. Your defensive backs were not the best. The, the speed was lacking. That's what I kind of get from the Chargers. Whereas the Steelers, through two games, mm-hmm. I, I think it's clear that this is a more complete defense, a lot more depth, faster in the secondary, stronger on the defensive line, if for nothing else the Cam Hayward's just healthy and looks good again. So I think you're right in saying that this will be a defensive matchup. Harbaugh always just gets the best out of defenses wherever he goes, oh, yeah. and you're seeing that in L.A. You also have to take everything you see with the Chargers with a little bit of a grain of salt, though, because they played the Panthers. Sure. And the Raiders aren't exactly convincing me that no. they're great, even though they went into Baltimore yeah. and won. And the Steelers' offensive schedule, or uh, the opponent's schedule, isn't the most daunting either. I mean, they had the week How one. How dare you after that Monday night football they win? Had the week, okay, that's week two. Our I'm BCS saying week power one. BCS soared because of that win. And then week two, they played the Broncos. I will say this, though. The, the Chargers and the Steelers are both top three in defenses and EPA allowed per dropback. Yep. And defenses and EPA allowed per rush. So they're killing it. 
on on both sides. Both teams are great against the rush and great against the pass. So, and this is something I said yesterday. This could easily be another thirteen to six victory or loss for the Steelers, but a low scoring game nonetheless. The Steelers have given up the second fewest points overall in the NFL this year with sixteen. Do you know who's given up the fewest? Is it the Chargers? It's the Chargers with yeah. thirteen points allowed so far. So, yeah, this could be another sloppy, low-scoring football game. I think that's what both of these coaches want to play. So that brings us back to Justin Fields, who's going to be starting. And you kind of talked about how he's going through some growing pains right now. And then you kind of segued us into that offensive line growing pains conversation. But with Fields, I'm not so sure if it is growing pains. I'm really convinced that this is what you're going to get. I think this is who he is. This is the type of quarterback that Justin Fields, I don't want to say that he's limited to, because I think that you can tailor a playbook more towards him, let it open up a little bit more towards him, especially with him running the football, which he did not do that much in Denver. You know, Kind of making him be a passer a little bit more, kind of protecting him almost, mm -hmm. not wanting him to get injured. So... I think there's some more you can get out of him. You can squeeze a little bit more juice out of Justin Fields, but I just don't see him as this, you know, answer to the franchise's problem at quarterback ever since Big Ben retired all of a sudden. And I know a lot of people are saying that, you know, if you watch the games or if you, you kind of read between the lines, you can just see it and you can just tell and it's a feel thing. Well, I, I want to see it to believe it first. And he's got another opportunity this week, Jacob, to go out there against the Chargers and run for 125 yards and put a couple of touchdowns up on the board. And that will then allow me to get some momentum going in that direction. Maybe you will have me on your team, you Justin Fields truthers out there. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll start to buy some of that stock a little bit more. But right now, all we've seen is a guy go in there, manage a football game to not lose it, act like a backup, mm -hmm. and be 2-0, and be very successful. All you can ask for from a backup. They're treating him like a backup. Mm -hmm. And until I see him open up things a little bit more, until I see him really get some statistics on the board to help drive the victory home for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, I'm just going to look at him in that light as well. And I know that this sure. is another week where it's like, oh, Tomlin said, you know, it's, it's Justin Fields, we're preparing for Fields, but... How hurt is that calf? That's kind of what I'm wondering, too. How hurt is mm -hmm. that calf? Do they really think that you know a couple of dropbacks in game speed is going to make that thing pop, and you're out for the entire year, and they don't want that with Russell Wilson? So I'm still going to choose to buy into this guy's just too hurt to play. He won't be effective. We've got probably the best backup quarterback in the NFL right now. Let's just keep playing him. We trust him to not lose the game because he hasn't done it for us so far. Got us out to this 2-0 and start, and we'll try to get out of the stadium alive, as Tomlin likes to say with the Charger game, and roll into next week and reevaluate Russell Wilson and see if he's ready to go against the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I mean, that's what the plan has been every week so far, right? So why should that change now? So I think because of that, you're going to see a, a safe offense again. I think you're going to see him treated as a backup. Right, and especially against this defense. Well, you want to talk about not using the middle of the field. Derwin James is in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. So there's another Jesse Bates out there. I think we can assume that they're going to avoid using the middle of the field against the L.A. Chargers in this game. Barely even dip their toe in that water against the Denver Broncos. And only a few times, very short passes. One 15 yards down the field that was incomplete to Calvin Austin in that game. But don't expect a lot of over-the-middle stuff in this one. I think that you'll see a conservative, keep it outside, keep it towards the sidelines, no interceptable passes from this uh, Steelers offense again. And I'm sorry, you know, I hope Fields wins the game. I hope he gets the 3-0, and obviously. But if that's the case, and Nostra Thomas is correct here, sure. and that's how the game plays out, and you're right where it's going to be another 16-13 to like slugfest, mm -hmm. and Fields does just enough, doesn't turn the ball over, moves the chains a couple times with his legs, finishes off a drive in the end zone, if that's too much to ask, that's not going to be enough again for me to go into Indianapolis and talk like a lot of people nationally and some people in the fan base oh, are yeah. saying that, oh, Fields is the guy. He's on 100%. You can't take him out. He's 3-0. and You can't bench 3-0. and You know, I hate to draw this comparison. It's unfair to all parties involved, to be quite honest with you. 
But Charlie Batch went three and one when Ben was out. They didn't debate yeah. about keeping Charlie the year Batch they out lost there. The rule to the Packers, right? Didn't debate keeping him out there. Didn't think that, you know, well, do you make the switch? He's the hot hand. And I know that it's different sure. because, you know, Ben Roethlisberger was Ben Roethlisberger. He was the undisputed franchise quarterback. But you've kind of been treating Russell Wilson ever since pole position was uttered from the coach's mouth as the number one quarterback. I've gotten vibes through camp, preseason, and now in the regular season, despite this injury problem, he's still the number one quarterback. So I don't care how many games your backup wins. I don't care what he looks like when he's winning them. You go back to your starting quarterback. You remember like a few years ago when Teddy Bridgewater was ripping off wins for the Saints? And then right. Drew Brees got healthy, and there was this whole debate, like, do you go back to Drew? Yes, you go back to Drew Brees, <laughs> and they did. Like, he provides the greater ceiling. I believe Russell Wilson provides the greater ceiling for this team. I ain't know it for sure, well, like but you I want to see it. I want to at least exactly. explore it. Like you said yesterday, there's no harm in saying once Russell is ready to go, put him back out there. And if it's more of the same of what you saw of Justin Fields, if it's not enough of a significant improvement, then you put Fields back out there because he's won you enough games and maybe Russ loses you the one game that he goes out there for. And if Fields is if, if Fields is able to go 3-0 and and let's say in this hypothetical that Russ comes back in week four, that's the timeline. Okay. And Russ loses that game and he doesn't look great. I wonder what the Steelers' mentality will be if he's healthy enough, we'll keep going back out there with him, or it wasn't good enough, we have to give the reins back to the guy who won three games for us instead. I wonder how many games they're going to allow Justin Fields to win for them to say, if Russ goes back out there and kind of craps the bed, say, well, this guy won us this amount of games, and Russ didn't. We have to go with the guy that's winning. And, I mean... If I'll it, entertain if, that. I'll say the leash could be shorter now because of Justin Fields' success. Right. If, if, and here's the thing, too. If, if success Fields, is a hard thing to say. It, it is like, because he's, like, he's one, winning they, they games, which one is touchdown, what matters the most. But, but they scored one touchdown. One touchdown. He's not thrown for over 200 yards. He hasn't rushed for over 100 yards either. Danny Dimes engineered an offense that had three touchdowns and lost. And lost. But still, like... No, it's, get the it's ball a great in the end point. Zone. Malik Neighbors right now. He's like the fourth leading receiver in he football. Is. He's getting yardage. Yeah. Like, get the ball moving. Bad offenses find the end and, zone. And, you know, we're talking about Malik Neighbors and the Giants. We know how bad that offense is overall. I mean, we think George Pickens is better than Malik Neighbors. That's not even a discussion. And then the supporting cast in New York compared to Pittsburgh, it's pretty much the same. Any, any NFL team that has a bad receiving core, you can just say, yeah, Put him up next to the Steelers receiving core minus George Pickens because it's a bunch of nobodies. It's a bunch of guys that combined for five catches and less than 30 yards within two games. That's what the Steelers backup wide receivers are capable of doing. If Justin Fields can't create more than Russell Wilson and it leads to losses, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. If the Steelers, like I said, you lose, you win that first game 18 to 10, you win the second game 13 to 6. Justin Fields failed to turn over the ball. Great. That's awesome. One turnover. If if you know, if you want to play the game of Presley Harvin was still on the team or say uh Wakeman didn't do as well in relief um in week two, say a botched punt happens or a turnover actually happens, or one of Boz's six field goals in week one doesn't go in from fifty plus yards. He had another fifty plus yard field goal on Sunday against Denver, too. I think the first one was like 53 yards. Say any of those 50-plus yard field goals don't go in. Say you don't have the most accurate kicker in NFL history from 50 yards out. Either of those games could have gone the other way. This team could easily be 0-2. There's no one out there saying, well, you got to keep putting Justin Fields out there. He's dynamic enough. He's a play. He's he's at, he's good on his feet. He can get you those extra yards. He's fast enough. He's bigger in the pocket than Russell Wilson is. No one's saying that. I don't understand. These games aren't being won 31 to 10 or 28 to 6. They're being won 18 to 10 and 13 to 6. Now, I think you'll see people say, maybe they have already, that now's another opportunity for Justin Fields, right? He can go out sure, there yeah. and put up those numbers that I've been talking about. I want to see the gritty. I want to see something in the end zone yeah, 100%. that makes you feel 
real warm inside and, and makes you feel a little cocky but as a Steelers fan. But of any week, Tom, so far, I'm the least confident because this is the best defense you're going up against so far. Yeah, I still think it's not the best. I still don't think it's the greatest defense in the world. You're right. You're accurate when you say it, that it's probably the it's best the defense better, that they It's the better of the three that you faced all season. I think Atlanta has the potential to be a better defense overall at the, okay. end, and the end of the, it all. It's, sure. it's so hard to look at this because there's two factors going for the Chargers. Hey, they've played some crappy teams. If you've played the Panthers... Like, your stats are just completely skewed oh, yeah. and out of wonk. Like, and you're leading the league in a lot of stuff. In our triple play, Tom, you and I, whoever takes first pick, should just t- pick Fade the team the that's playing now. against the Panthers. So that's going against them. And then I like to call this the Harbaugh effect. Like, the Chargers are a completely different team from last year despite having a lot of the same personnel carryover. Because he's just a much more serious coach than what they've been dealing with. And... They have a new identity of, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> just for an easy way to describe it, Michigan football from what he's been running there for the past couple of years where you just bully the other team. And that's that's not L.A. Charger football, right? Like you don't right, think of L.A. Right, Charger right. football. You think it's, of the more like the Dolphins, offense, yeah. like in like a really soft team or California. Mm-hmm. But they're bullies right now, and he wants them to be bullies, and they're embracing That's the Harbaugh way. They're embracing I mean, that identity, identity yeah. fast. So. That's why it's so hard for me to just jump in and with what you're saying about how this is the best defense unequivocally that they're going to face, even though that's probably true so far into the season. Right. But at the same time, my reasons there kind of eat each other alive. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah the stats are skewed because they played bad teams, but also but they're Har- still doing Harbaugh the right- effect. Like, yeah. defense comes to play when Harbaugh's in town. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a stiff test defensively. Because in the past, the Tom, without Harbaugh, if Brandon Saylor's there, right? This team, this the Chargers team, could still be two and zero, right? Because they have played some pretty easy opponents. The Raiders week one, and I'll and I'll check the Raiders being a week one opponent the same way I'll do with the Falcons being the Steelers week one opponent. I mean, there there should be no difference between the Falcons losing to the Steelers in week one and then beating the Eagles on the road in week two compared to the Raiders losing at home against the Chargers week one, but then going to Baltimore week two and winning on the road there. Those are two very similar situations. I know Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Gardner Minshew, but we've we've given Minshew a lot of credit for winning no matter which city he's playing in, whether it's Philly or Jacksonville or Indy or now in Vegas. So I know Kirk's better, but still, this is not the worst team in the world that the Chargers face week one, but they got them week one, just like the Steelers got Atlanta week one, and you got the lucky straw there. But the Panthers thing, yes, it's much worse, but... This is a team that's still dominated. I mean, I think it's not inconceivable to say a year ago with Brandon Staley at head coach that the Chargers could have found some way to lose that game against the Panthers or could have found some way to lose that game. It's easier to say against the Raiders and the Panthers because the Panthers are just so bad. But maybe the game isn't as close as, well, I think the final score was 23-6, to something like that. Maybe that game is a lot more close, like the the one against the Steelers and Broncos, where it's thirteen to six, where the Broncos were always within one score, or no more than two scores away from either tying it up or taking the lead. That's what that's what John Harp. That's sorry. That's what Jim Harbaugh does, and I don't think it's it's wrong of you to say both sides where they're playing bad teams, but now they have this coach that ensures that they're going to play well against these bad teams, and now they have a big. This is. Without a doubt, the biggest matchup of the season so far for both teams, right? Well, you're both two and zero now. Yeah, you're both two and zero. Trying to get to three and zero. If you start three and zero, your odds of making the playoffs are very, very high. So I'm saying, as I was saying, you know, people will say this is a big opportunity for Fields now to go out there and take it, put up the statistics to back up the wins, and leave no doubt. Have everybody buying in to you being quarterback one. Will he get the chance though? to put up statistics will the game plan allow him to do that we kind of started talking about the defense of the chargers being stiff resistance against that we'll keep talking about that talking about do you see a little bit more of a free justin fields in this game uh from the offensive game plan for the steelers he's jacob i'm tom this is the Steelers standard on the steelers audio network We bleed black and gold. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers Audio Network. 317. 
score big this season at Don's Appliances. From game day feast to post-game cleanup, we've got you covered. Don's has the region's largest selection of in-stock appliances from brands like Whirlpool and Maytag. Because when it comes to kitchen and laundry appliances, we know how to play to win. Plus, the big box stores can't beat our free next day delivery and guaranteed lowest prices. Visit donsappliances.com, where black and gold fans shop for appliances. Hey, football fans, BetMGM is giving you a shot to win season tickets to Pittsburgh Steelers home games for the next 10 years. Enter BetMGM's Decade of Black and Gold Sweepstakes, and you can score two tickets and VIP hospitality 10 passes for a decade. Opt in each week and bet on football to boost your chances. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 and over. Pennsylvania and West Virginia only. Visit www.1800gambler.net. Please gamble responsibly. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Reward subject to expiry. Grab your lucky spot on the couch, because traditions make Sunday easy to enjoy. Bud Light, easy to Sunday, easy to enjoy. Bud Light is the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Enjoy responsibly. 21 plus, copyright 2024, Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Wolf here for Caliente Pizza and Draft House's new pro football special. A delicious two-topping tavern-style pizza for just 22 bucks. Perfect for game days with a thin, crispy crust and top-notch ingredients. Try Caliente's new pro football special tavern pie today. Caliente, the pizza of champions. Opportunity is knocking for Justin Fields. You can hear it. Listen. It's knocking for him. It's right there. Open the door, Justin. Take it. Take it. People have already given him the credit of taking it, though, because yeah. of the 2-0 start. Mm -hmm. They've said, oh, yeah, he's already got the job. He's a starting quarterback, no doubt in my mind. All you got to do is win the game. You just got to win the game. And this is where our critiques, you know, kind of look dumb in some light because... That is true. All you have to do is win the game. If you win every single game, you'll hoist that Lombardi trophy at the end of the year. So I get that that's the end-all, be-all, but you got to look at the bigger picture and assume that you're not just going to win football games playing this conservative, backup quarterback-driven offense week after week after week, you know, 18 to 10, 13 to 6. That's not going to happen most of the time against the Bills or the Chiefs. When you get into the playoffs, that's not going to happen against these teams. You're going to have to score. You're going to have to, you know, you can get those games in the mud for sure, and you want to because that's how the Steelers win. But teams are going to be able to, you know, play some muddy football too, get a touchdown out of it, get a couple touchdowns out of it. Create a turnover. It's something you've done so masterfully so far this year. Is you haven't turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen, right? You're not going to go 18, 17 games and be zero for turnovers, fumbles, and interceptions. So, yeah, you've played it perfectly so far. But at some point, and if Justin Fields is your guy, you got to open things up. you got to let him sure. be the guy. And, Jacob, you've been talking in our first segment here on the Steelers Standard about how this defense you think is the, the biggest test that the Steelers have so far this year. I also think that this offense yeah. is the biggest test the Steelers have had so far this year. Well, it's certainly the running offense by the Chargers. Well, I think well, that well the, let me explain too. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think that the the quarterback Falcons could be again, you go back to the Falcons, and they probably will have an offense that could stack up against the Chargers offense when it's all said and done and you could be like, yeah, you know what? They're pretty even. They're pretty good offenses. But you got the Falcons on a week where Kirk was just not himself. It was basically a preseason game for him, trying to get back out there for the first time uh, since week 8 of 2023. So that offense wasn't even close to where it should be at. Whereas the Chargers offense has been perfectly fine for what Harbaugh wants. They've been running the ball down people's throats. They've been mm -hmm. calling on Justin Herbert when they need to. He only has one interception through two games, so he's protecting the ball, but he's also got three touchdowns on the board already without you know, being tasked to do a lot for that team, and they don't have a lot of weaponry in the receiving core, so no. I think that's smart to not have him have to do that much when he's really only got Quentin Johnson and Ladd mm -hmm. McConkey as his two main targets there. So you know, their offense is hit the ground running 
if you will, no pun intended, because it is a very heavy running offense if you're the Los Angeles Chargers. So I think it's a stiff test for this Steelers team uh, in both directions for sure. And because the offense for the Chargers is probably going to be able to, you know, put some points up on the board against you more so than the other two offenses that you faced. And no offense to the Steelers' defense. I'm sure they'll be great with that Akershire Stadium behind them for the home opener. But that's an offense that has a lot of skill on it, and that's an offense that's been running the ball very successfully for their first two games. So you're going to have to respond offensively yourself with some points. And playing this conservative, don't turn the ball over and that's all you need to do game plan might not be the only thing you need starting this week with the L.A. Chargers. You might need to see Justin Fields open things up a little bit. So opportunity might really be knocking this week more than the other two weeks because now I think you're getting into the third week of the season. Fields has two starts under his belt. Let's start to see what he can really do. He's going to need to make more plays for us if we are indeed going to beat some of these better teams. Definitely. I mean, we've seen great football games through two weeks, right? We saw the Chiefs and Ravens on opening night. We saw the Rams and Lions on the first Sunday night of the season. Uh, this past week, we saw the Lions and the Bucks go at it. We saw the Chiefs and the Bengals go at it. Even though the Bengals are 0-2, they, they showed what an offense needs to do in order to keep up with the two-time defending champs, the ones that are chasing a three-peat right now. And the Ravens did the same thing on opening night. The Lions, who were one game away from getting to the Super Bowl, played a hell of a game, had a hell of an offensive performance, um, scored the opening touchdown in, in the overtime period against the Rams in Week 1. And then the next week, they were trotting out there kind of, in, not a shootout, but in, it was certainly a, both offenses had success, uh, Detroit and Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay came out the victors. The, play, the, the style of football the Steelers are playing right now, and I said this, yet we, we discussed this yesterday, it's, it's going to lead to winnable games for you in, these, in this first eight or nine games of the season. Once you enter late November and you draw your first AFC North opponent, which is the Ravens, and you open up that second half of the schedule, the final eight, the six against the division, and then Philly and Kansas City, you are not going to win games. You're not going to come close to winning games. Well, you're going to see more of the same that you saw last year where the defense does well to start, but then quickly the game falls out of hand because the offense can't keep up the defense is on the field for too long and gets gassed and gets exhausted, and the opposing offense has all the time in the world to run the ball down, run or pass the ball, whichever one you want to do, run the ball down the Steelers' throats on defense. So it's entertaining for now, and it's led to two wins, which is good because, like we've said so many times since the schedule was released, you have to stack as many wins as possible on this front end. But... The Chargers are a 2-0 team. The Chargers are a playoff-hungry team. So Denver is not going to make the playoffs this year. Atlanta could be. They could make it. I mean, we discussed yesterday uh, in our Week 2 recap discussion that the NFC South now is super exciting because there are three teams that you have on your radar between the Falcons, the Saints, who have scored 90 points in two weeks, and the Bucks, who are 2-0, and just beat the Lions in Detroit. So the Falcons aren't just guaranteed to win their division like we thought they were because now that's a three-team deep division. So the Falcons, sure, they're a good team, but I think the Chargers stand overall the better chance maybe because I like Harbaugh more than I like Raheem Morris. You like a, just, a younger Justin Herbert more than you like an older Kirk Cousins. This is the test so far. Right, we we know that the real test comes in November, but so far this is the real test. This is the only two and O team that you faced so far. This is the only team to not suffer a loss because the Broncos are zero two. The Falcons lost against you, and then have one win against the Eagles. So, I think there's a lot riding on this on this game in terms of how real can the Steelers be. I'm not saying if you can beat the Chargers and you can beat any of those teams that you're playing in the second half of the season. But like you said, Tom, to get back to your original question or original prompt, there has to be more pages in this 
Arthur Smith playbook that you're not using or you haven't used that you ha- you haven't used yet that you have to start using sooner rather than later because this offense needs to do way more than it already has shown if they want to win games and make it to the playoffs. And I think the Chargers are the same way. I think you learn a lot about yourself in this game too. Like they can look at yeah, that from definitely. that angle as well, where you know this is a test for the Steelers. It's a big test for the Chargers yeah. too. This can is they a, can they really look at themselves and say, do we have a, a legitimate enough offense? Is our running prowess really going to be enough to carry us this season, or does Herbert need to step up as this younger quarterback? Is our defense legitimate enough? Can they if they stop the Steelers' offense? Okay, great. That's another offense you stop. But if the Steelers offense somehow opens up an offense that has combined for what less than 30 points on the season or maybe 31 points on the season uh, and they score 30 points on you, then all of a sudden you're looking at yourself and saying, well, what is going on that we just let this offense run all over us? Yeah, that would be disappointing if the Chargers had the similar output that they've had against the Panthers and the Raiders on a run defense that you expect to be a lot better than those two teams if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the Chargers will have success running the football. I don't know if they'll have crazy success like they have. You know, this is, without a doubt, the best team the Chargers have faced this year. No question. You know, Raiders, I don't think are going to make the playoffs despite beating the Ravens in Baltimore, and thank you for that, Vegas. Yeah. And I, I obviously don't think the Panthers are going to make the playoffs. I think the Panthers should maybe be disbanded from the, the league. They should call up. They should be relegated. Georgia and yeah, have them play in their place. So, Georgia or Texas, whichever one. Whichever you want. one you want. Pitt. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is a step up in both, on both team sides for the competition aspect, and it's a huge game as far as importance to getting to that three and zero clip. Because here's some great stats from Matt Williamson that will make you feel pretty good, Steelers fans. Let's start with the Steelers first. Eight of the last nine teams, Jacob, that have started 2-0 and with both of those wins being on the road uh-huh. have made the playoffs. So there's only been one outlier. Will the Steelers be the second outlier out of those nine teams or what would be the past 10 teams to go 2-0 and on the road? Or will they be in that 80% and make it? It's good, though. It's good, good omen. To yeah, see it's, that that's it's, a, it's a good track direction. record for sure. Since 1990... Of the teams that began the season 2-0, and doesn't matter if home, away, whatever, just sure. start the season 2-0, and 63.9% went on to make the playoffs, 41.2% won their division. Now, teams that start 3-0 and make the playoffs at a 75.2% clip and win their division just a smidge over half the time, 51.5%. Mm. 3-0 and in the NFL... Is it huge. Is, is, it's massive. So, I mean, you saw what three wins in a row did for the Steelers last year. Three and zero at the start of the season this year. Sure, it's different, but you, the Steelers went three and zero to end the season last year, right? And that got them into the playoffs. It got them in as the seven seed. Granted, they lost, but that's what three wins in a row can do in a seventeen game season. Every game, every game matters in this, in the NFL because there are so few of them to go around. And the more you win consecutively, it builds up more momentum. But the more you win, just overall, helps your cause so much more. And it's no surprise that those percentages go up drastically just by one game. How you said two and O teams versus three and O teams should be no surprise to any anyone that follows the sport why those numbers are so different just based off of a one game difference. So either team gets off to that 3-0 and start. Whoever gets to win in this game, they're looking at making the playoffs almost 7.5 out of 10 times. That's pretty good statistic in your favor. So it's a huge swing game for both of these teams. And I don't want to be boring again, but running the football is going to be successful against this Chargers defense. Talking about Williamson last night on the advanced scout, you know, we agreed, or he told me, and I stole it for the opening segment of this show, <laughs> It's just a star-studded defense that you know doesn't have a lot of meat to it sure. beyond that. And Bosa and Mac are a problem and Definitely. can absolutely wreck a game. But Matt is not impressed with their front. They play a 3-4 defense, and he thinks they're weak up front. And Zach Frazier has been mauling people like a grizzly yes, bear in the first two weeks. I think you're going to have a lot of success on the ground. I think you're going to be able to run the ball. And that brings us full circle around to where we started this segment opportunity for Justin Fields, will he be allowed to flex what he does best more 
And I think he has to. I think, again, this is a game where you see Fields run the ball more. I want to see some of those Justin Fields powers. I want to see some more option plays with hot, with Harris and Fields, with Warren and Fields. I think that if you're going to entertain Justin Fields as the guy for this year and years beyond, you got to let the horse out of the stable. you got to let him do what he does best, what he's done best ever since his Ohio State days. And you want to say you're protecting him. You don't want him to get injured. You know, you don't want to be down to your third quarterback now with Kyle Allen. That's fine. But then that's telling me that once Russ is healthy, he's going right back in there if that's mm-hmm. the case. Because you can't just play this entire season not trying to get Fields hurt and hoping you just, you know, thread the needle on a bunch of one score victories. Gotta let this guy play to his strengths eventually. And I think this is another game where he can. I mean, like, if the middle's weak, like Matt says, I could just see in a third and eight, a third and nine, you know, when Bosa and Mac get their ears pinned back and they're hungry to sack fields, you do a nice little deep drop back. Those guys come up. You have the tackles spit them out to the side a little bit. And then, thank you, I'm going right up the middle if I'm Justin Fields. A nice little 10, 12-yard scamper for the first down. I, I want to see some more of those plays. And I think that'll help Fields in the passing game, too. I think that'll allow him to, you know, feel like he's playing football more than just trying to be a quarterback and trying not to screw up and that'll allow bigger plays to happen. Yeah, and I would have obviously would have no problem with that because that sounds like night and day compared to the Steelers offense so far, but even though the Steelers are going up against a defensive front like you said that has the stars, they did the same thing against Atlanta, right? That that secondary had the stars between Bates and Simmons and George Pickens was still ha- able to have a huge day, right? I mean, there was, there would have been three plays of 40-plus yards that George Pickens would have had had it not been for the offensive pass interference call, which only led to two of those 40-yard passes being converted. But still, despite the studs on defense for Atlanta and their secondary, overall, it was penetrable, right? So I don't think just because they have two great guys between Bosa and Mack, like you said, and like Williamson said, the surrounding cast is pretty poor. And I don't want to be too critical, but it's it's almost reminiscent of the equivalent of the Steelers wide receiver room, where like what what are you really throwing out there besides those guys between Bosa and Mack? It's 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 really just Well you got bu- Derwin James. No, I'm saying up front. Right. And those guys, you know, they're edge rushers, they're outside linebackers. They play that three four and you can kind of get those guys off your butt Mm -hmm. if you're running the ball successfully and you're not holding on the ball too long, which metrics say Fields has not done. I know I called back to that play in the red zone where he did pad it a little too much, but those are the fewer and far between plays right now with Fields. Hopefully he doesn't revert back to his old form, especially against these two dogs. But, you know, it sounds weird for me to say this, but I feel like the Steelers' offense and what it, it could be with fields in there, the, the best version of it, it's it's just run, 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 and run, and that really neutralizes good pass rushers when you're just running the ball a lot. Totally. I And I wouldn't have a problem. I mean, we've been calling – I feel like we've had this discussion a million times, Tom, about how much you need to try to get this offense to be run first. And even though this year it seems that they're doing that, but a lot of that has to do with Justin Fields – I want to see Najee Harris involved. I had said last week going into that game against Denver, I want to see Najee clip 100 yards. He needs to be able to have that kind of tune-up game against a really poor defensive front in Denver to really get the juices flowing, and he didn't get there. I think he got like 60 yards, maybe 59 yards in the day. Granted, some of those were pretty punishing runs. Like We saw a bunch of five, six, seven-yard, I think his long of the day was 11, but I wanted to, I wanted to see more, and like you said, with the with the offensive line with Zach Frazier leading that way, I I need I I feel like every week the goal for Najee should be to clip a hundred yards, unless you're going up against, geez, I don't know, maybe like San Francisco, San Francisco's front seven, I don't know what what's a good front seven that compares or or is comparable to the Steelers. 
San Fran's good. I mean, the Eagles are supposed to be good. Yeah, I mean, Eagles are supposed good. to be good, but they just had their butts whipped by Atlanta. Against an offensive line that the Steelers had their way with. That's another thing that's good about that game is you can look at that offensive line for the Falcons. Supposed to be one of the best in the league. Didn't do well against the Steelers. Is that more Steelers? Did we overrate the Falcons? They looked like one of the best offensive lines against yeah, the right, Eagles. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so... If that's the case, if 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 your if if what our assessment is true, and this uh, this L A Chargers defensive line isn't that intimidating, then why shouldn't the goal for Najee Harris be a hundred yards? And I know that Justin Fields as a as a whole new element to this offense, especially on the on the run game that you've never seen or you haven't seen in a long time. I mean, already Tom, they're averaging. A- 